Hi, I'm John and welcome to our new Shop Talk series where we're actually going to be talking about new technologies and trends that improve the way products are made and how customers experience them. And we're going to be focusing the day actually on human machine interface or HMI. And Tom, you're our resident expert. Um, you've been working with Flex customers for a while now, helping them realize these new experience. So I figured we should start with you and how you define HMI. Thanks, John. So I take a wide view of what encompasses the human machine interface. So beyond the kind of more immediate items like displays, lighting, touch, haptics, et cetera, it also encompasses the underlying elements like processors, sensors, connectivity. I'd also say it's also the firmware and software that pulls all of these disparate elements together to drive the user experience. So within our lifestyle division, which encompasses everything in and around the home, the user experience is one of those differentiating elements for these products. Um, and there is maybe a lot of great capability or performance, but if the HMI doesn't surface this to the user in a matter that's discoverable and easy to use, it opens the door for competitors with a perhaps more thoughtful approach. So along those lines, what are some of the HMI experiences you all see trending with customers? Uh, we work in a pretty dynamic space. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, within lifestyle, it's really hard to say that there's one trend that goes across every single product, every customer we talk to. I mean, we one day we'll be talking about large appliances, the HMI on there, or one the other we're talking about a personal care device like a, a shaver or even the next day an electric scooter. So there's a lot of variety and it's there's not necessarily one thing um, that breaches everywhere. Um, one thing I kind of do talk about a lot with customers though is sensors. Um, not only are they very commonly core to the functionality of a device, they also can add a lot of more intelligent features like uh, understanding if the user is there or if they're touching something. Uh, so sensors are a very common uh, topic even though not everyone necessarily uses the same ones. Um, so what about you guys? Is there anything uh, more broad that you guys see amongst more customers? Yeah, one of the things that I, I've seen and I've gotten to work a lot with as far as from a design standpoint is dead fronting. Um, so dead fronting is where we're hiding certain elements of that user interface, um, whether it's behind a smoked piece of glass or some translucent plastic or even some light through metal that we actually do here. Um, and so what that's allowing our customers to do with their own products is it's letting them guide the users in this really simplistic way that feels really intuitive, right? Um, you're hiding things when they don't need to be there or you're bringing them back up when it makes sense to bring them back up. So, and it's uh, like, like I said, it's kind of trending across different areas. We've seen it in one of our segments, you know, our little small appliance segment, and now we're starting to see it come across uh, some of our other ones. Another trend that I've seen, uh, just especially in this last year with the COVID-19 pandemic, has been um, an another angle of HMI. You know, we typically think of the HMI of a product as the display, the touch, knobs, buttons, things like that. But uh, this past year, we've seen some touchless HMI uh, technologies. So that could be voice and audio interaction, you know, being able to talk to your device from across the room. Um, also integration of gesture control. So swiping left and right, up and down and uh, taking that a step further even to holographic touch. So all of these are ways to eliminate the use of shared surfaces, um, eliminate the spread of germs. And then we'll even implement some, some examples like antimicrobial surfaces. So being able to manufacture products that are, are gonna stop the spread. And I think that these technologies uh, will continue even after the pandemic's over. Um, and, and bleed into the commonplace HMI technologies. Yeah, Maria, I think it's funny you mentioned holographic touch because I think that's one of the favorite demos that we've created over this past year. Um, I think we wouldn't necessarily have thought to do it and without this whole COVID-19 thing. Uh, so what we kind of did was take a traditional display, a sensor bar with infrared sensors and a reflective plate that actually projects the image on that display in midair. So combined with that sensor, um, you're actually feeling like you're using a touch display, but you're actually just touching nothing. Uh, so that's really um, emphasizing how it can help limit that transmission of germs because you're really not touching anything, but it's really easy to um, teach someone in a public space because they're, it's like a phone. Everyone has a phone. So uh, I think that's uh, one of my favorites to really share with customers since not everyone has seen it. 
So I really enjoy thoughtful use of lighting. I know it sounds a little simple, but it's a great cost-effective way to add character to a product. You know, in years past, we've seen plenty of uh, simple on-off indicators for sure, uh, but it's great to see customers in a place now where we talk about animating brightness levels, uh, going to things like RGB LEDs. And as far as experiences, you know, custom nightlight functionality is a bit of a given, uh, but also things like personalization per user. So one user may want to have something like red, another yellow, and then also scene-based lighting or mood-based lighting uh, through Alexa or Google Assist, all great use cases. Yeah, I think one of the other kind of lighting element related um, areas that we were, we're getting to work on a lot more often now is this light through metal technology that I kind of mentioned earlier with that dead fronting, right? So um, it's the same concept with the dead fronting where we're wanting to have this minimalistic feel on a surface, whether that's, you know, an appliance or um, a washer, dryer, or even, you know, starting to see it in other spaces but we're actually putting it behind a real piece of metal. It's not this faux piece of metal that doesn't feel cold to the touch. Um, that's just made to look like that. It's a premium feel and touch brushed, uh, polished, you know, what, what have you for your specific application. So it's really interesting to see. And I think uh, we're getting some really great reactions from people uh, when they actually get to interact with it because they're like, wow, that, that feels great. It looks great. Um, and it just drives that premium experience that a lot of customers are, uh, are looking for. One of my favorite HMI techniques is uh, combining these touch technologies with haptic feedback. It just takes, you know, the premium level that, that John was talking about with uh, touch through metal, it takes it to another level by giving you that vibrational feedback um, with each input that the user does. Um, I think we're all pretty used to haptic feedback on our cell phones. I, I really like it um, on my phone, but I haven't really seen a lot of our lifestyle customers implement this technology into their HMIs. So uh, I'm looking forward to hopefully seeing um, some trendsetters <laughs> come out there and add uh, haptic feedback technology to their HMIs. Um, it's a great way to, in some situations, even replace audio feedback. Um, so I know an example that I always think of is uh, on my microwave when I'm putting in the time to, to set it, a lot of the times the, the audio feedback will, you know, everyone in the room is hearing it. Whereas if we replace that with just that vibrational haptic feedback, it's just the, just the user who's getting the recognition that the device is understanding um, your input. So again, it's a really cost-effective technique and I'm uh, looking forward to seeing some more of our customers implement that. So as we think about some of these technologies, how are we seeing customers differentiate from their peers and what challenges do they face? So I think one way that our customers can really differentiate from the competition is by putting themselves in the shoes of their end user. Um, with HMI, we, we really wanna see customers design for um, you know, usability, make it aesthetically pleasing, make it really intuitive. Um, you know, when you're looking at a panel like a, on your washing machine, sometimes it can get really overwhelming when you see 30 different buttons. You don't even know where to start when you uh, want to use it. So uh, going back to what John mentioned about the dead fronting technique, sometimes we can we can take that technique to just show the user only the actions that they would need. And then with the next step, showing them the next action. So kind of guiding them through the process. And so HMIs that are designed with this um, really intuitive user centric. Uh, HMI are the ways that our customers can differentiate um, and make end users want to want to buy their products. Yeah, I think another way that um, some of our customers are starting to differentiate their products is, um, you know, they're taking a look in other areas. What can they learn? And not all of our customers have that really broad experience. They're they're usually really good at this one segment or this one area that they already exist in. Um, but we're really fortunate that we get to work actually across a bunch of different industries, um, automotive, medical, consumer products, smart home, floor care, all this great stuff that we get to do every day. And we get to see a lot of things that those customers are learning. We're learning from our own projects. Um, so it, it's really helping the customers, uh, you know, differentiate and how they can implement in new different ways. Um, we kind of saw that with the light through metal and the dead fronting techniques. Um, I kind of mentioned it earlier. We saw that early on in small appliances 
But now we're starting to see that trickle across different segments where we're seeing it on floor care being implemented into the handles of vacuums. We're seeing it implemented in smart home. Maybe it's hidden behind fabric. Um, so there's a lot of different ways to um, really elevate your product and stand apart from the competition. I think one of the kind of challenges within the challenge, though, is that um, some of our customers, you know, it, it's a premium experience, and so it can come with a cost. Um, so uh, that can be something concerning for some of our customers. I mean, cost is always going to be a concern regardless of the product and industry that it's going to end up in, right? Um, you always have a budget. You always have a timeline that you're trying to meet. Um, but I think that's a very common question I get from customers is, okay, we have this really cool idea, but how much is it going to cost once it's actually in the product, right? So we've done a few costing exercises um, for very similar things amongst different um, products, like uh, how much is a cap touch button versus a mechanical button? How much is a decorative plastic finish versus a decorative fabric finish? So there's a lot of these different choices that you might not necessarily have more details um, on unless you have uh, this broader view. And so I think it's really interesting that we get to kind of share that and help our customers make those decisions uh, throughout the life cycle of the product. Yeah, and I think that's uh, a really good point. You know, we have a lot of customers and they all really face um, unique challenges when it comes to the HMI experience. So uh, we actually want to hear uh, from you if there's anything you have a question about for our experts here or if there's a topic you'd like us to cover um, feel free to drop those questions or suggestions um, down into the comments and uh, hopefully we'll get to answer them in our next video in our shop talk series so we'll see you then